Hey all, it's Moots. Welcome to Battery Basics for Vapors, Episode 3. Today we're going to talk about regulated mods and battery protection. Namely, do regulated mods, the protections inside them, mean you don't have to worry about battery choice or, or what might happen with the battery of the mod because the device itself will protect you. And the TLDR on that is, well, a little bit of protection. But there's some things you still have to worry about. Now, the two types of devices we're going to talk about, internal battery and external battery. Internal battery mods are the ones where you cannot change. This is an Indican MVP4. I can't open a door. I can't do anything with the batteries. There might be a LiPo in here. I'm not sure of what battery chemistry or type is in here, but it's fixed. When the battery wears out, you replace the entire device. Then there's something like this top side that allows me to open it up and excuse me, put a battery inside, namely a user replaceable device. And we're going to talk about both. Hopefully I don't drop those. Now, if working properly, both devices should monitor the voltage of the battery. This is really important because you want it to stop before the battery gets discharged too low. We can discharge them down to 2.5 volts. That's what they're rated for, all these batteries, without any problems. Most devices stop around 3 volts, some maybe as low as 2.8, but typically around 3.1, 3.2 volts or so. That's fine. It extends battery life a little bit. Um, it helps as the battery ages to discharge it up there, and it makes for a shorter recharging time. There's not much vaping time left between 3.2 volts and 2.5 volts. So as long as the device is working properly, they'll all stop before the voltage gets too low. And hopefully, if, when you're recharging, in case the battery voltage goes too high because of a, either a bad charger or a bad uh, USB wall wart or something like that. Uh, the protection will also, for just about any regulated device, stop any short so stop short circuits in the atomizer namely it'll just go whoa ohms too low or uh atomizer short or something like that so all the devices will do that and that's great that helps protect the batteries from short circuits it helps protect the battery from being discharged too far now for internal battery devices where we cannot replace the battery we have to trust that that battery is well matched to the device now yeah, I think most of the time that's something we can do. That's one of the appeals of an internal battery device. Device and battery should be pretty well matched. But it's not always true for higher power devices. You'll often find that um, the battery they use, when you, if you're digging into all the technical details and stuff, or testing out the device, the battery isn't quite capable of powering the device at high power levels for more than just a couple of hits. Um, it might get very warm, things like that. That's when you know they're kind of pushing the envelope a little hard. But on, overall, internal battery devices, the battery is matched pretty well to what the device can do in terms of power. Now, user replaceable devices, there's some concerns here because it doesn't protect you from all the things that can go wrong or be wrong with the battery. Uh, why? Because they have no idea what battery you're using. Now, some of you will go, yes, 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 but the battery voltage sags too low, the device turns off. That can offer some protection from using like a 5 amp battery in a device that's expecting uh, or will draw 30 amps. Uh, as I wrote here, it could be a 5 amp battery or a 30 amp battery. The device has no idea. It'll still try to draw 30 amps. Now, as I mentioned, the voltage sags should trip the protection, but do you always want to trust that? These are mass marketed, inexpensive electronics. Yes, the vast majority of the time we have no problem with it, but do we always want to trust that? Or do we want to just in the back of our mind go, you know, if I have a battery well matched, if I use a 30 amp battery and I'm pulling 30 amps from it, then I don't even have to think about that a little bit. It's just something you don't have to worry about if we do pay attention to what battery we use. User of replaceable devices also have no idea if you have mixed batteries. If you have a device that takes two, three, four batteries, you should not be putting in a 1500 mAh battery and a 3000 mAh battery. That 1500 mAh battery is going to go down to zero a percent, probably around 3.2 volts first. Now, that's not inherently a safety issue, but it affects your performance. Uh, it ages the battery faster, and it's just all around a bad way to vape. Why not use two 3,000 mAh batteries and get much more vaping time? They're not that expensive. They last a couple of years. And for, for the price, it's a great investment. To, to have a great set of batteries matched up 
married, namely you buy them, charge them fully, and always use them together. That's a married set of batteries. Um, use replaceable devices also cannot protect you from damaged wraps. And this is critical for those who argue online, and I've seen lots of debates in social media going, oh, don't worry about it, regulated mods, you're, you're fine if you use the wrong battery. No. If you have a battery that up on top, there's the blue wrap that comes up around it and it's holding in a white plastic insulating ring. They're called the top insulating ring. If any of this is damaged, the outside border of this battery is negative and the center contact is positive. If any of this up here is damaged, the wrap or the ring is missing, which is really bad, then as you slide your battery in and out of your device, you can bridge or short circuit the outside negative part of the battery, which is the whole can, against that pin there because you're sliding it against the contact. And this is the charger or the device. You can short circuit the battery, it can overheat, it can be damaged, or it can even explode. The wraps are very important. No regulated mod, no mod that exists can protect you from a short circuit right here because none of the circuitry in the mod is involved. It's just that metal contact when you're putting the battery in and out that short circuits the battery. So your regulated device can't protect you from that. Uh, that's for the, the top, regular, uh, wrap damage on the top. On the side, if you have two batteries, and I'll grab another one. If you have two batteries, let's say a two battery mod or a three battery mod, if there's damage on the sides and those two cans, metal cans touch, one of these will short circuit and can burst. That's because these batteries are actually wired up like this in series in almost all the regulated mods. So yeah, this negative part of the battery is at zero volts, but this battery's negative part is at 4.2 volts. So if they're sitting like this and you touch them together, you're touching zero volts to 4.2 volts and you have a short circuit. That's bad. And no device can protect you from that because it's happening in the battery compartment completely away from any electronics that can help you out. Now, both types, so that's really some of the big problems with the user replaceable ones. Not problems, but reasons why you just can't say, oh, use whatever battery and it just doesn't matter, you're safe. No, both types, internal and external battery mods, when they say they have protections for over temperature or getting too hot, they only monitor the temperature of the circuit board, not the batteries. And this is really important. I don't care how close that circuit board is to the battery, the circuit board temperature is going to be very different from the battery temperature, or can be very different. Your battery could be scaldingly hot, and the board would just go, hey, okay, yeah, it's kind of warm in here. Uh, temperature protection in a regulated mod protects the regulated mod. It's not set there for the batteries. The big problem, even if the batteries don't leak or burst, is that this heat ages the battery and just increases your risks overall. So it's just not good to have your batteries running really warm. Your mod, if the batteries are blazingly hot for a really long time, maybe that eventually would heat up the circuit board. But you're going to depend on that? No, just assume that protection is not there. And keep your batteries from getting hot. This is a really important thing. Everything I've listed here does not mean regulated mods are dangerous or any mod is inherently dangerous. They don't protect the batteries in every possible way where something can go wrong. And electronics can fail for the things it does look at, like uh, low voltage or stuff like that. You just can't say, oh, regulated mods are always safe. 999,999 out of a million of them will work correctly, but one of them might fail. It, it's just a little background thing to keep in mind that this is not foolproof. So what can we do? to reduce the risks, uh, actually a lot. And again, th this is something you have to be worried about or be scared about. It's just kind of a good practices kind of thing. You have so many things you might do, like in a car to help reduce your risk. You know, if you park on a hill, uh, maybe the parking brake should be on. Things like that to keep your car from sliding down. Just little things you can do. And we can do these same kind of things with our devices and it just becomes part of the habit of using them. One, use a battery with a high enough current rating. Reduces the amount of heat and also increases the efficiency, namely how long and how well the battery can operate. If it's not sitting there stressing like crazy to try to deliver 30 amps because you're using a 20 amp battery, 
your battery is just going to perform a lot better. And since we don't know whether we have a 5 amp or 30 amp battery in there, why have even the crappy performance with, involved with having all these early, low, weak and battery alerts because you threw in a 10 or 20 amp battery when you need a 30 amp one? Even if you're not thinking if it's dangerous or risky or not, the performance will be lousy. Match the battery to the way you vape. And for regulated mods, episode two of my Minding Your Mods series tells you how to choose a battery for a regulated mod based on your power setting. Don't let the batteries get hot. We were talking about up here earlier. It ages the battery faster. It increases your risks. If you find your battery getting hot all the time, switch to a higher current rated battery. You might have less runtime, but your battery is going to be happier and it's going to last longer. And you won't get as many uh, early weak or low battery alerts from the battery. You'll be able to use it down to 0, 10, 20% as opposed to maybe it shutting down the mod when you hit 50% or something like that. Remove the batteries who are not in use and store them properly in a non-conductive case. Don't put them in a pocket. Don't throw them in a drawer with scissors and who knows what other metal stuff. <laughs> These are exposed ends to the battery. You want to put them in a case. So these kind of cases are fantastic. They're inexpensive. Vape shops online, a buck, if not free, a lot of uh, vape shops. Uh, online vendors, maybe in vape shops, will give you these free if you order a pair of batteries. This is how you store the batteries. Keep them out of heat, keep them out of cold, keep them out of water. And you won't have any concerns here. Uh, you don't want to keep them in the device, regulated or unre unregulated, just because of if someone else accidentally kids or something like that or it falls down and starts running continuously, what we call auto firing. Also, some mods, actually all regulated mods, draw tiny bits of current because they have to be a little bit awake, even though screen's turned off, to detect when you want to do that three clicks or five clicks to turn it on. Part of the circuitry has to be turned on to detect those clicks. And it's always drawing a little current from the battery. So if you're always leaving your battery in the device, particularly if you're not using it for a couple months and you put it away, you can draw your batteries down too far and now you have to buy another set of batteries because you can't recharge them up again. So remove them from here. And that also, for the one in a million chance, there's no chance of the device failing when you're not around. Charge both internal and external mods on a non flammable surface and only charge when you are around and awake. This is, this is not a thing where I want to scare people. It's just a little thing you do to keep a very low chance thing that could happen from causing any problems. If it's on a, you know, a, a metal countertop or a, a marble a granite countertop and something happens in the charger or you leave batteries in your mod and the mod all of a sudden starts auto firing and melts itself down or catches fire or something like that, it's on a non-flammable surface and you're there and you're awake and you can reduce the consequences of this very low risk occurrence if it actually does happen. Never ever use a device that's malfunctioning. You hear weird noises, it's not acting right, something like that. It's just a way of helping reduce your risks. One of the things you can do, don't keep trying to play with something. If you have a malfunctioning device and you can't get it to work, don't leave the batteries in it and then go to sleep. Take the batteries out. Stop using it until you figure out what might be going on. Try a different set of batteries or, or go to your local vape shop, see if they can help you out. Don't continue using it. So while both are internal and user replaceable battery mods, vaping devices, don't protect the battery and us, there are things we can do to help lower the low risks even further, make it even less of something we have to think about or worry about because we have enough other things to worry about in our lives. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching.